Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Um, the, the first thing I usually ask is, uh, what, what's your experience of Zen? How, how many of you actually uh, practice it? Okay, that's a fair amount. Um, how many of you have, say, a meditation practice? Okay. Um, how many are just sort of in, interested in Zen, just in Zen as a, as a thing? Okay, good. What is Zen? <laughs> no, I mean everybody has a sort of sense of, of what of, of what Zen is and what attracts you to it. Um, what what attracts you to it? Or say coming to a talk like this. I meant to talk on the basics, so I, I like a starting point. Peacefulness. Peacefulness. Okay. Staying in the present. Okay. It's the idea that if you can kind of turn off the voices, yeah, that's something important. Okay, good. So silence is more. Yeah, okay. Peacefulness, silence, um, living in the moment. There's three ones. Uh, any, any, anyone else? What about forms? Anybody think of Zen in terms of forms? What does it look like, in other words? Because this, this is important too, because we're, we're at a crossroads in the West now where um, a lot of the so-called ethnically based uh, religions and culturally based religions uh, are sort of on the decline. Uh, there's an aspect of Zen which is, uh, it, it transcends culture. And for a lot of people, that's, that's something that um, they really appreciate about, about so-called Zen practice. And those are more of the elements that I'd like to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Good. Can you hear me now? Is that, is that a bit better? Yeah. Sometimes I, I get quiet, you know. Tired. So, um, you know, th there's a movement nowadays to, obviously, uh, th there's, there's not an awful great respect for religions nowadays as such. Um, Zen can be regarded as a religion, but that question has to be sort of uh, um, asked for each one of us is that, um, you know, what, what, is, what is a religion and what does it do? So if we go, you know, coming back to this question about the basics of Zen, um, there's two schemes that I'd like to bring up. The first one is um, uh, the, first, the three aims of Zen. So the Japanese uh, would say uh, Kensho, uh, or realization, enlightenment. That's one of the aims. Uh, the second one is actualization. So what good is it having a, a realization? Um, it's very important to actualize it, you know, make it actual in your, in your daily life. And the third one is uh, service, or basically to help to relieve the suffering in the world. You know, and when, and when it comes down to it is that most religions at their core, before you start getting into numbers and political influence, etc., have that as a basis. And not necessarily the realization part, but the, the ending of suffering. I mean, why bother with uh, religions or ways of life if they're not actually going to make some sort of effect on, on one's life? So the, um, the major sort of focus of, of Zen practice is around these three parts, uh, and especially on that last part. It doesn't mean that you have to do them, say, spend many years in trying to attain realization and then uh, a whole bunch of years in actualization and then a whole bunch more then say teaching is that basically in living is that these can be done simultaneously you know it's not that uh, these are steps or stages um, now the second scheme that I want to get into, and you know, is that I, I may sort of cross over and all that kind of thing, is that uh, um, 
we say that there's, there's three essentials. There's great faith, which is a very tricky word in, in the West, again, because of how people really re, uh, relate to it. Uh, great doubt or questioning, inquiry, and great determination, those, those three. Now, uh, again, with all of this is that what are you doing, you know? When you enter into, say, something like meditation or you're entering into any sort of spiritual practice, it's very important to get that initial uh, focus right. So when I first started to practice, um, I tried the religions that were available to me at the time. So I was raised in the Church of England, uh, in England, which um, at, at that time was more of a social sort of organization. Um, I became a Baptist for a week or two, um, <laughs> but you know, they, they only drank coffee at the time and, and uh, I got tired of their songs, so, um, so that didn't really work for me. And then I started doing Kung Fu and I looked into yoga um, and then it didn't seem to sort of really relieve my angst that I had about life. And I'm using a, a Western word there, you know. Sometimes we say suffering, but it's like something that really motivates you to do something. There's like a yearning. I don't know quite how to put it into, say, you know, good English, but uh, there was a yearning there which none of these religions really sort of uh, uh, presented, you know, a way to sort of work through that kind of thing. So then I, I learned about meditation not through... Um, Zen practice, but actually through yoga. And so I don't know what I was doing as such, but the angst was there, which is important. That's like a driving force. And then the, the next part of the mechanism was I actually sat down on the floor and rather than sort of picked up a bunch of beliefs, you know, beliefs can be fine, but they can also be baggage. And I sat there for as long as I could, you know, so I sat there for three minutes. <laughs> but it's important, you know. I mean, you have to know your own pace and what, what you're capable of. Uh, and the interesting thing that happened was that I felt at home. So it wasn't really based on, say, following a religion as such. Uh, and it wasn't really a, anybody's way but my own way. But there was also an ancient story there. You know, in other words, many people have tried this over. I reckon they say about 5,000 years people have been sitting still on the ground. You know, and in the deep south they sit on a rocking chair on the porch. You know, who knows what's going on inside? But it fulfills a certain, you know, a certain desire that, that happens. So the first part is look at your own motivation, why you practice and what you want. So if you're going to enter into Zen practice, um, it's not going to promise you a, a, a whole lot except a way to work through the things that you regard as, say, difficult in your life and a way of appreciating the life that you have, including the ingredients that you have, you know, including things like you may be angry.